Beautiful day for church, man. Beautiful day. Church was fantastic. The church was fantastic. We had a guest pastor today, and he went, stab it. So I can't his complain. His name was Ron McManus. That was not his name. It was. Ron McManus? Yeah, I really? swear that's what it was. I swear it was something else. No, I didn't think it was I'm tripping? I'm pure tripping. I don't know what I thought his name was. I definitely know what I thought it was. I don't know. Hello. Hello. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. We're at Corgi's. My parents and my family, my family came to see me today, so... I just finished the podcast, really good. My boy, my boy Brian went in. We like whenever me and Brian talk, it's a good time. We talk about some very fruitful things, so that was fantastic. But here at Corky's, about to spend a whole lot on some pretty cool food. Um, I might get a dirty dog again. Y'all remember the dirty dog last time with the fries, mac and cheese, all that oh, crap, yeah. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. Might get that again. I'll see you in a bit. Who's gonna be good? That's all I know. So I'm gonna drive for the next one. Yeah, so why are you driving like this, huh? Are you scared of the spider? I am. Bro. Don't worry. I saw it at first, but then I saw the web with it. And I was like, oh shoot, but then it left and I missed it, so. You don't wanna rest and sit back? No. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're playing on Quay's day. We're getting a little better. You know what I'm saying? Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Yo, we're getting better. Clay, you're getting better, man. You stink. Look at my thing. You stink. 40 to 21. Is that a good, is that better? Oh, it's talking about I stay. He about to go stay. No, I'm about to pee. Cap, bro. He gonna be there in 40 minutes. Yesterday, while doing my Billy Graham day by day with Billy Graham, of course, on um, my read a verse. And it was basically telling us about providing ourselves as a, as a living sacrifice to the Lord and doing his will. And Billy Graham went in at the bottom and began to speak about a collegiate, young collegiate woman who had spoken to one of his colleagues and said something that really caught my eye and definitely caught his since he wrote it down in this day by day. But, he, but what, what the young lady had said is that in 50 years, in 50 years, the people of this world, these worldly people have done more than what Christians have done in 2000 years. And she said, the reasoning for this is that Christians just are not committed. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm committed. And I can say that I even need to be more committed than I am. I get on here every day. I say what I have to say and I, I, say, what, I say what the Lord has put on my heart. But there's so much more I could be doing. And you can you, you probably look at yourself in your life and say, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing pretty good, but there's more I can do. Where is our commitment? And for us who are choosing to step up and stand up and speak out about the Lord and his will, how much more can we be doing? Where is our commitment? Because while reading Isaiah, the 21st chapter, my understanding is that one way or another, the Lord's wrath, the Lord's judgment is coming. There's no running. There's no hiding. Your money won't save you. These women won't save you. These men won't save you. These muscles won't save you. 
all the things you work to build up on this earth won't save you. At the end of the day, the answer always has been and will forever be Jesus Christ. So, what does that mean for us Christians? It means that if you know the answer, show the answer. Speak it. Live it. Walk it. Talk it. As I walk through these hallways, when people come by me and walk past me, they should know who I'm repping. Who is my Lord? Who do I serve? And for those who may not know, I should go let them know. And I should not stand by and be quiet. There should not be 2,000 years since Jesus Christ has left this earth and people still confused about who he is. We as Christians should be showing that. We shouldn't have so many, many inconsistencies in our churches, so many inconsistencies in our Christians. We should all be consistently following Jesus Christ. There's only one Jesus, one example. So why do we have so many people walking in so many differences, trying to show half and half, where we show and live by Jesus and the things that we like? subscribe to the beliefs and the statements he said and I'll align our lives with what the pieces and the bits and pieces that we like I'll, I won't do this sin but I'll do this because it fits what I enjoy doing now in every single aspect of our lives commit ourselves to the Lord as a living sacrifice and live by him because in Isaiah's 21st chapter as we've been seeing in Isaiah the Lord is coming for these wicked nations and the wicked people and if you don't get your act right then you're you going you gonna, you gonna to get beat till you act right and the truth is that many people are running towards eternal damnation. And we're, we're cool with a lot of these people. We hang out with a lot of these people. I can say I know a lot of people in my life who sadly just do not believe. But one thing I'll let you know is that if they're around me, they going to know who I serve. I will not be quiet. I will not be shy. Because I understand judgment is coming. And... We may not have been here all these 2,000 years, but while we're here, but while we're here, you better do something. Because when you leave here, walking up to the gates, if all you can say is, God, I knew you, you have to ask yourself, what did I do with what I knew? <laughs> it's beautiful that you have a relationship with God. It's beautiful that you have eternal life and you've been saved by the Lord. That is a beautiful thing. That is the first step, but now show it, live by it. Be an example and then be one to help lead others to the cross. Because since you've been saved and given a gift and you know the good news, how could you choose not to share that which you know? Man, the second I make, I make any accomplishment or achievement, I'm the first to go tell my boys with a big old smile on my face. So the second I gained eternal salvation, I should be smiling and jumping up it with joy and yelling, Lord, what do you have for me to do? I should live my life in a way that gives him glory day by day. Just like Isaiah, when that cold touched his lips and all his sins were atoned for, he knew he was made righteous. And now with this new understanding, he didn't sit by and chill. No, he stood up. And when the Lord asked, who will I send? He said, send me, Lord. We have a lot of people saying, send me, but they ain't going nowhere. A whole lot of people who, who accept eternal salvation, but they ain't gonna tell nobody. Man, now it's time for you to stand up. Cause we got too many people running to destruction, too many people facing facing different punishments and eternal damnation and judgment, just like Babylon and just like Cush and just like all these different na nations in Isaiah. And we are cool with these people, but we are so quiet and we keep to ourselves while the Lord has told us to go out and spread his word that someone else may be saved. Cause we are all we have all been given this gift. We just all, haven't all accepted it. And many of us just don't know. So how are you going to sit by and let your brother or sister, let your brother or sister, people you say you love, die and, and face the eternal death, separation from God, when you have been given such a gift? At the end of the day, it is not only you to grow the seed, but if you never plant one in the first place, how can anything grow? The Lord wants to use you as a vessel. Be a willing participant, be ready, and be prepared to be used. Because at the end of the day, destruction is real. It's coming, and ain't nothing going to stop it. But what you can do is help save people while you have time. You are not the Savior, but you know the Savior. So why not direct them to salvation? At the end of the day, it's not on us to grow seeds. But the Lord has given us the ability and opportunity 
to plant them. Why not be dutiful and fruitful and plant seeds before destruction? Because while weak, we at the end of the day, we don't know when the destruction is coming and it's on us to know. But while we are here, let us do the Lord's work. Let us be ready and prepared and help prepare others for the time that's coming. Because there is no condemnation in Christ. We are saved. But let us not be saved alone. Let us save those around us and save all those that we come in contact with. Let us not stop sharing the good news. We all, we have the ability to be like a newspaper and spread that good news. But a lot of us are being quiet with the light that the Lord has put in us. Shine that light. Let the Lord's shine, light shine brightly because it ain't about you. It's about him. Allow him to use you. Because at the end of the day, this is eternal salvation we're talking about. He saved you and he can save anybody else. So why in the world would you be quiet with that good news the Lord has given you? Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we just say thank you for another day, Father. We say thank you for the light that you have shined so brightly and the, the gift that you've given us, the truth that you've given us and placed on our hearts and minds and spirits. Now, Lord God, may we live by it. Understand, Lord God, we aren't just saved for ourselves, but we are saved, Lord God, to do. We are not just blessed to be blessed, but blessed to be a blessing. That is something you have taught me, Lord God. And because I know this, Lord God, let me show this. Because there's a lot of things, Lord God, that we understand. We know that we're saved, but we don't walk and live like we're saved. We know we've been righteous, but we don't walk and live like we've been made righteous. And because we're blessed, it's time that we show it by helping to bless others, Lord God. We've been given a gift beyond our own understanding. We don't even comprehend why you would give us such one. But because you've given it, help us, let us share this good news with the world. The others may come to you, Lord God, and stand before the judgment throne with your name in their mouth. Knowing you, Lord God, confessing you before the last breath. So when they get, Lord God, before your throne, they won't be confessing it too late, Father. We say we thank you. We love you, Lord God, because you've saved us. I help us be a blessing unto others. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. Don't you ever let that light stop shining. And don't you ever stop being a good vessel. Don't you ever stop being a good follower. And don't you ever, don't you ever get satisfied. Don't you ever get satisfied. Because there are so many, there are, man, there's, it's not about the numbers. It's about souls. At the end of the day, there are so many souls and there will always be souls until Jesus comes back. And we are just trying to, we are trying to help lead as many souls as we can to the kingdom. It's not on us to grow the we to grow the seed, but it's on us to plant it. Go ahead and be a good planter and let the Lord do his work. Amen. If you enjoyed that vlog, make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I pray you enjoy the vibe, man. Hey, no limit.